You know, paintball, I think, is one of the most complex sports when it comes down to everything you do. The best thing, the best representation I ever got told about it was it's like football, but everybody has the ball. Yeah. <laughs> It's True. like basketball, but everybody has the ball. Everybody can score. Everybody can hit a three-pointer. Buzzer beaters happen all the time in paintball. Um, it's just in a different aspect. Everybody has the ball. So it's like, who is going to make the play? Because everybody can make the play, you know? Yeah. As much as I want to say do do drills as often as you can, I would say just go to the field as much as you can, really. Um, if you're not playing, you can do the drills. But it's hard to tell people starting out to run drills because yeah. they don't have a passion for the sport. Go to the field and get that passion. Um, get into the weeds of what paintball really is, you know, and understand like this sport is 90% skill, you know, and then yeah. the 10% athleticism. Like if you can shoot your gun and shoot somebody with your first ball, like you're going to be 100% better than the person that can run really fast and not hit you. Do you know what the 2022 season looks like for you and your squad? What you guys, are you going to stay in D3 or you're going to move up to D2? Tell us what that looks like. Yeah, so... um <clears throat> Um, the guy who, who's basically in charge of D3 is Andrew, um, and and he's uh, he's one of our players. He player coaches, um, but he he said. All right. Well, we're not. I'm not going to mess with anything else in case uh, something else decides to happen. But I am going to redo the intro. So, I am super pleased to have Matt the Gym Rat here with us, and thanks so much for everybody who's tuning in. Sorry for the restarts. Um, hopefully, it's squared away now. Hopefully, I sound good. He sounds good. I'm not going to worry about the music or anything. But um, funny story. So. I, I've been in the paintball space for quite a while and I take I took a long break. I came back in uh, I think it was like 2016 then took another break then came back in 2019 and decided to do content creation and uh, Hey, thanks white lightning for the for the follow um, And I started a YouTube channel started making content and Matt the gym rat was literally the very first person That came up to me at an event and said hey, are you the guy that does YouTube videos? <laughs> and I just was like dude this guy's awesome and I believe you know, you had sent a message in my comments before that, but that's really your your reaching out is what got us connected. And I'm so grateful for that because that's just awesome. Um, so I'm super glad to have you here. Uh, we've got a lot of fun stuff to talk about that I think is going to be pretty exciting. But I know there's a lot of people. Well, I should say there's some people within my community who haven't met you before, who don't know much about you. And I'm sure they'd be curious to know where, first of all, where did the name come from? And did paintball come first or did the gym come first or did they both come at the same time? Yeah, man. So, uh, the Matt, the gym rat, the name, um, I started a YouTube channel when I was in like high school, uh, and I was originally like sub fit nutrition. And all I did was protein reviews. Cause I got really into protein. Cause I'd always been working out, trying to get bigger, faster, stronger for sports. Um, and I eventually got out of, you know, high school and was in college. Um, and I started like doing like workout vlogs and stuff like that. And, um, it was one of those things where I was like, this, this name is not good anymore. So I was like, what rhymes? What goes good with, like, Matt? And I was like, bat, rat, rat. I was like, well, I, I am in the gym, like, five days a week. I was like, and I do do videos on it and all this other stuff. And I was like, I mean, it rhymes, you know. And I, on Instagram, I was just like, what what sounds better? Subfit Nutrition or Matt the Gym Rat? And, like, everybody Matt the Gym Rat. So I was like, that's that's what I'm going to be from now on. So. Um, I just stuck with it. it. It it goes well. Like if I tell anybody, like I'm Matt the gym rat, they're like, oh, I can you know easily put that together. Like rat Matt Matt the gym rat. <laughs> it's it's pretty easy. Um, so uh, it's one of those things that kind of just rolled off the tongue, and I was like, uh, it sounds like I, I just need to go with it. I don't need to put a um anything else on my name. It's just Matt the gym rat. Find me everywhere like that. So it was pretty easy. I just stuck with it, and it's you know it's went all the way into paintball with it. So. So when did you start playing paintball then? So I started playing, funny enough, in 2018 uh, was my first year. And uh, we we played like rec ball because uh, my brother, me and my brother didn't want to play on Sundays because we went to church. So we only played Saturdays and where we were at, uh, they didn't have speedball on Saturdays. So, so and we didn't think about traveling, you know, we were like, why would we drive two hours to play paintball? Um, so we just played rec ball, probably, you know. 15 20 times we played like two tournaments got completely destroyed in all of them um but we started playing in 2018 and then 2019 is when we decided to get serious and start traveling to practice and all the other stuff but yeah I'm, I'm fairly new to the whole the whole paintball scene in general um never really 
been one of those people that like played since they were super young i was 21 when i started playing so that's awesome um and that's really surprising given the fact that you just got off of a second place finish at the world cup which is awesome and we'll talk was that that's correct right yes yeah yeah so we'll talk yep. about that a bit more as well but that's to me like that's the story of you know christian martinez but even in some ways uh shortened down because he's christian's been playing I, i'm not i'm sure you're familiar with christian he's mm -hmm. ex bar army yeah uh played for iron man for a while um but his i mean the time he's been playing paintball i think now has been about 10 years but but just the fact that you started in 2018 and then took second at world cup just recently is is pretty impressive and very impressive i would say um but i'm sure there's a lot of people out there like myself included um are very curious about one why you got started into content creation like even before paintball when you said you did you know supplement reviews and stuff like that or protein shake or protein powder reviews but what caused you to start that why did you want to make content yeah um so <laughs> if, if y'all really want to dig deep you can go down the rabbit hole of of the videos that i've made but um so i actually was in a funny enough in a dance crew in high school <laughs> or uh, in, in middle school we did we did dancing like like when i was you know super young you don't really think about that stuff um so we like i don't know if you, you probably heard of it it's called jerking it's it's mm -hmm. now getting uh, big traction now on TikTok and stuff of having people try to do it. I saw like, we, the we Christmas had, videos and stuff. Yep, yeah, yep, people trying to jerk. Um, so <laughs> we we did that. We did uh, dancing and stuff like that. So all my friends like we made they made YouTube videos for it. And so I was like, that's what I'm gonna do because all my friends do it. So uh, we you know made YouTube videos for it, and uh, that's like where I started making content. So that was like 2011. Um, when I started just putting out videos, I would record them on my webcam on my uh, on my computer and I would go on YouTube and just hit play and then hit record <laughs> and dance to the music. Um, and then eventually it went on to like grab my mom's point and shoot uh, and taking videos and then put music over it. Um, and then it went in, went into high school. I stopped dancing because I realized I was really embarrassing <laughs> to have <laughs> all these videos of me <laughs> dancing uh on the internet so then i got into like drinking protein powder and i was always watching like reviews on the new supplements that came out because i played football and i was never fast enough or strong enough compared to a lot of the other guys that were like at the top so i was like i have to you know i gotta do this stuff because it's gonna help me get better um which isn't true but uh it does help but uh it's uh it's so i was always watching self and reviews and i was like why don't i just do them so i would record them on my phone and upload them to youtube uh, and then it went, you know, it kept happening. And I mean, I think my second most viewed like actual video has like 10, almost 10,000 views and it's of a supplement review I did when I was 16. I was going to say, uh, I think I've seen that video when I first yeah, came across I just your about channel. To say, <laughs> I was just about to say like every, I get, I get sent so many times, like people will be like, dude, I fell asleep watching your videos and I woke up to you talking about protein powder. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, <laughs> but yeah, I did that all the way up until I graduated. And then I started doing like uh fitness vlogs and so because uh, i that's all i watched on youtube because i would work out you know run on the treadmill and just watch fitness vlogs while i was like doing that i'd go home watch fitness vlogs i got into bodybuilding um so i was just doing all that stuff and i realized nobody really cared about that either like nobody cares about your life if it's not that interesting and i was like oh, i might as well stop and then uh, i started playing paintball and uh i started watching people's videos and i was like these are not like what i want out of a paintball video and so I started trying to, you know, make videos like that to where it was like, I want to watch paintball when I watch a paintball video. So that's what I started doing was just like recording us playing, uh, doing edits to it and stuff like that. And then it just built up after the years of, you know, doing it for so much. I realized like what I can what I can do, what makes, you know, people want to watch my videos, what makes my videos good, all that other stuff. And I'm still evolving. It's, you know, it's a never ending process. But um, I did start there and then just, you know constantly build build or use the building blocks that i got and the learning thing or the things that i learned and put it together so were there channels then that you came across that you that inspired you in the direction you took with paintball or do you um, remember them i would uh, i would say that that um i mean paintball content creation in general is like one of the smallest communities ever yeah so, for sure um i i can still remember like looking back to when i was like 21 and 22 like sitting in uh my apartment just like watching solace's videos uh matt's videos and just watching people play um i did watch ronnie a good bit but uh 
there was like sometimes when he'd have really good videos and other times when I kind of like be disinterested, which got me into making the videos because mm. I was like, why, why, why don't we just put paint on all the videos? Yeah. Um, but I did, I did take a lot of traction from him because I mean, I have Davy stocks and like the bang bang both came from him because uh, I was just like, I'd seen a guy on Instagram like following this other dude and he had, like done all the same stuff as him and like tagged him in all of it so that's what i was like i was like oh i'll just take inspiration from him and like he'll know that i like took it from him so yeah. uh that's where i got all that stuff from but uh i did take inspiration from ronnie um jake's another guy jake blackstaff he doesn't upload as much um but i loved his videos the cinematic way that he like put the game into perspective of like it doesn't take a lot of effort but if you do put a little bit of effort, it makes your videos look really good. So that's another person that I uh, I followed a lot. And unfortunately, he doesn't make as many videos mm -hmm. now. But uh, I do still watch his videos and like try and get my videos to look even closely like his. But yeah, those are those are the, most of the people that I looked up to in the content creation world of paintball. That's awesome. Um, and your channel, at least, I mean, your YouTube channel's grown a lot since we met, and I'll talk about that in a second. But have you and Ronnie been able to connect? I mean, I know you went to the cre content creators like meetup thing at the NXL. Mm -hmm. I I imagine he was there. I didn't actually get a chance to say hi. But have you guys talked at all about where you got your inspiration originally or connected or what's that been like? Yeah, I told I told him uh, told him once and he was like, that's cool. Um, but all of our interactions have been really short um, mm -hmm. just because he seems to always be in a hurry to where he's going. So I don't really get a lot of time. And I've talked to him on Twitch, but uh it doesn't seem like he understands who I am or like what I mm. what I uh what I do. So um I just try and you know stay in my bubble and let him do his thing. Um and I'm, I'm sure our paths will cross in a, a lot bigger way um here sooner or later. But uh yeah, I've told him before and he 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 uh he said it was pretty cool. So that's awesome. Well, I mean, because you got a shout out on the NXL broadcast or the Go Sports broadcast yeah. when you guys were playing and mm -hmm. the fact that you have by i think a long shot i actually don't know who's closely behind you but at least within the paintball space you have the most followers on tiktok with like a million plus at this point so it's hard to ignore how how present you are now in the space in content creation and so i just that's why i was curious if 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 you know when you guys had interacted if he ever said anything to you about you know hey i really like what you do I, did you get you know any inspiration for me because i like ronnie dizon's uh videos as well but i also agree there's a lot of not paintball in his vlogs sometimes. And it's like, well, that's cool. But like, I really love his barrel cam videos, you know, like I watch some of those yes. on repeat when they're scrimming other yep. pro teams and stuff. And so it's hard to, obviously they don't, you know, they don't practice all the time together as a team, but even his, even his videos that he's done when he's done drills before and like, uh, and, and in Chicago or wherever it is that they practice indoors, I always find those really fun to watch. So that's interesting. Um, well, talk to me then about, I think when you and I met, which again, for those for those of you who don't know, uh, Matt and I met, I think at Sunshine State Major. Yeah, that was for the first time. And I think at the time I checked your channel, you had only like 400 something, 450, maybe 600 subscribers. I, I don't remember if yeah. you remember how many you had at the time. But from then until now, you're upwards of 1,200 or something. Uh, I'll probably hit 2K today. 2K. Yeah. Okay, well, there you mm -hmm. go. So even more than I was, I, I remembered. So... What has that looked like? How did that happen? What what did you did you do something different? Was it just that your TikTok really helped leverage that? Tell me about your process with creating content. Yeah. Um. So so I I've always had like this this steady flow of content. Um. It's always been a struggle because I've always filmed on my GoPro, but this year I've definitely had more quality uh footage to work with, which I think helps out a lot. Um. But having uh like uh over 200 million views on tiktok definitely helps uh getting people to come in so i probably gained i would say like 600 subscribers from tiktok which isn't a lot when you look at like the numbers of people that are coming through but uh it's more than i could ask for so i didn't i didn't uh i didn't sign up for them to all come but they did um and that was the 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 that was the the big goal yeah uh you're muted too. I can't hear you. Sorry, I was just gonna say, I thought I was unmuted. My bad. I was just saying, and and it is impressive, even though you have a lot of likes and a lot of views, the crossover rate between things like YouTube Shorts and TikTok is super low for people to actually come over to a channel and subscribe. So, even though it's 600, that's still really impressive. But. Yeah, yeah, and that that helped a lot. Um, so that paying Matt to film us helped out a ton. Um, I got a lot of good footage from him, 
and then my buddy aj um from ziggy media he also just he i mean we're, we're great friends we live in charleston together um and we're always talking uh he's got a background in social media management um and marketing so he is always down to just film me like for free he loves shooting so he's always like yeah I'll, where, where are you playing what time i'll be there you know type of thing um so that helps out a ton but doing that um i'm always in the learning process so literally i take every little bit that i don't like and i fix it in every video so i feel like constantly evolving um the shorts posting on the facebook like the talk by sell and stuff also helps because i i never realize how much people don't know who i am until i realize that like people really don't know who i am like um I think more people know of me outside of paintball than than inside. Well, of paintball. Well, I would say that's because of TikTok, right? Like, yeah, I, I imagine yeah. a lot of people. That's not a million people all within within uh, the paintball space, obviously. So that's mm -hmm. all. That's my. That was my other question: Is are you now starting to see that there's a lot? There's a there's an audience shift within within your subscriber base that you're now having to actually, I mean, maybe uh, explain what paintball is from a competitive perspective or how that's shifted. Yeah, it's uh, it's almost like a daily thing for me to get messages on Instagram of people asking me like how to play paintball, where to buy paintball stuff, uh, stuff like that. And um, most of the time they don't get answered because that's pretty easy to Google. Um, yeah. But uh, I will I will answer like so, like uh, some people. But uh, yeah, it's definitely uh, it's people are interested in the things, and I realize like what people like to see, what people don't like to see um, from a like public point of view instead of a player's point of view um because i know players point of views i can upload anything and they'll like to see it because it's you know it it relates to them um but from a public point of view i could upload somebody you know doing a snapshot and uh you don't see the other person getting hit but it's like okay that that looks good but to another person hmm. like what are they doing <laughs> what's happening that's interesting um yeah so so i understand like what it is that people want to see um, and the hard part is that I can't do it because I'm playing, right? Yeah. So I just have to rely on what I get uh, and try and put it, try and capture those moments that people want to see and put it out there. Um, so that's the hardest part is that when I'm, when you talk about me compared to everybody else that, that does TikTok, they all can control what they're capturing. Whereas I'm at the, you know, at mercy. the mercy of whoever is taking the video. Um, and if they don't understand quite like how I understand, sometimes I just have to roll with what, with what I get. Um, luckily, I've been fortunate that the people that have gotten me footage this year have been uh, very good at what they do, and that makes it a lot easier. Um, but if it was somebody who didn't know what they were doing, um, it'd definitely be a lot harder. But uh, I've been pretty fortunate this year. So That's awesome. Yeah, I was watching your, uh, your recap video. And a lot of the footage, I mean, all of the footage that's in there that's not of your barrel cam is really good. It's really, really yeah. good stuff. And so it's I'm, it's super helpful that they live in Charleston and that they're yeah. willing to come film you and stuff. Because, yeah, I, I mean, at least in Utah, um, where I'm from, it's you have to kind of like set up your camera before the point starts. And you got to hope that you're still in frame when you would go to make a move that looked really cool. And like you go yeah. back and look at it. I, I can't tell you how many videos I filmed this year on my GoPro from a static perspective that just like this doesn't work nobody wants to see this like the point was really cool i think that i got like three kills four kills maybe in that point but like nobody can see it it looks yeah. bad and so it's tough <clears throat> um, unless you have obviously people who are in your area who know how to film and also know what it is that people look for when they're looking for paintball footage because mm -hmm. you had mentioned that earlier that that there is a difference between, you know, paintball players like to watch all kinds of footage for the most part, but like to see movement specifically, the athleticism of a paintball player is so different that to, to the untrained eye, it's very interesting. Like, oh, I've never, I mean, I can't tell you how many videos, uh, or not how many videos I posted a TikTok. It was like my fourth ever. Um, I mean, it, it's very small in comparison to some, but, uh, I think it ended up getting like 13,000 views or something like that. It was the most I had gotten on my account at that time. And I can't tell you how many people were like the guy's head. It's like rainbow six head glitching, or it's like, you know, they were making all these other references to what it was that I was doing. And I thought to myself like, Oh, that's interesting. Like these are not paintballers. Like none of these people know anything about paintball, but yet here I am trying to make content that, that paintballers can find. And it ends up being very difficult. Even when you do hashtag paintball, hashtag all these other things. So I just find that very, very, very interesting. Um, all right. Well, let's, I'm very curious about, so you said you started paintball in 2018, um, mm -hmm. but from then until now, taking second place uh, at the World Cup uh, is quite an achievement. And I'm curious to know 
where you started within the divisional ranks, where you, you know, how quickly you moved, like what that process looked like for you. Yeah. Um, so 2018, I played D5 for the CFOA, and that was like one of the last years they had five man. Uh, and they did like the round robin uh, type where you play like eight different teams. Um, and that was, I mean, <laughs> I left my cleats that, that for the very first event. I didn't have cleats. So, uh, oh my it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was fun. And then we played one in Greensboro. Um, that was in Rock Hill. We played one in Greensboro. And then I played a three man in 2018. And then I probably pra practiced speedball three times that year, too. So it was like I touched the field six times in 2018. So I don't, I don't really count that. Uh, you know, you don't even get comfortable enough to like get in your bunker and rap and be like talk. So 2019 was really the start, and that helped because Crisis uh, got uh, one of the guys that that plays for Crisis got a field um, that was like right outside Columbia, which was about two hours from us. Mm. So we would we would travel up there and play against them. Uh, we got some guys together that that wanted to play. We had about six of us, and we started playing the CPSL. That was the first year they did five man playing D five, um, and I think that was like the big, big turning point of to where it made me want to play. Uh, we got second place. We got sixth place at the first CPSL and second place in D five at the second one. And that second place really was what kicked kicked in. Um, mm. I was like, that was that felt really good. Like I was on cloud nine when I came home. Like, oh, how'd you do? Oh, I got second. They're like, oh, that's really good. I was like, yeah, man, but uh, definitely want a first now. Um, <laughs> so that's that's where it started. I started working out, like focusing on like speed, agility, stuff like that. I think that was a big turning point. We would go out and practice. I was like, can't wait to go play next weekend. I can't wait to play. Um, so we played D five that year. We got two seconds uh a third and a six in the four events that we played so that was really like where things started rolling and then we went and played d4 five man and we got like 14th out of 68 teams that year um so that was good for like first d4 event ever it's five man so it's a little less competitive but still you know never playing yeah or, never playing an excel event or anything like that um so that's where it started um and then really i just started learning like that was the biggest thing was i was just like absorbing as much knowledge i knew that i was behind if i wanted to do something like get become successful compared to other people like at my age i knew i was behind so i had to do as much as i could to absorb as much information so i could catch up as fast as i could mm -hmm. um the big thing that i i noticed like coming up was that paintball is a weekend sport so what can you do during the week to get better so that when you go out on the weekend you're already ahead of the the curve right so most people touch their guns once a week four times a month maybe if you're going out every weekend mm -hmm. um if you're super dedicated you'll touch it eight maybe saturday and sunday um if you want to be the top you know you're touching your gun three times a week so you know you're going into uh what is that 12 12 times a month maybe mm -hmm. um so i was like how can i get my hands on on the the access or how can i do what i need to get better and how can i excel faster than even like the three times a week uh and i don't have access to the field or anything like that most of the time during the week so it was you know training watching film um realizing what it is that stops you from being a good paintball player um mm. so just like noticing things um so i just focused on what i was bad at at practice i didn't worry about getting shot i didn't worry about uh looking good or winning points i literally was just like how do i how do i make myself comfortable in the most uncomfortable situations so that's what i just practice on and uh that really helped me d4 in 2020 um we did all right uh that was you know a crazy year with covid yeah so um but only I mean, two that, events that, was, that year right it was just vegas and yeah Local. Yeah, and we didn't we didn't play any of the NXL events besides World Cup, but we played the CPSL because they did X Ball that year, first year doing X Ball. We played two events with them. We did awful. Uh, the second event we got six. The first event, uh, but that was my first ever X Ball event, you know. And then we won an AXBL event, and we got I got third when I guested with another team. Um, but really, it was just like playing and then this year i probably i played 11 events this year yeah i saw uh, that that was with, insane with, yeah with five different teams um and i was listening to play the game podcast and they were just like uh it was the ryan smith one and he was like uh tyler and Mar marcel were like how did y'all how did y'all get so good and he was like we just played a lot man he was like we played as many events as we could and that's what i was like mm -hmm. gotta do it um so i literally was just like hopping on any team 
uh, if I didn't have money and somebody was like, well, we already paid for entry. All you do is pay for paint. I, I was there. So <laughs> it was like literally anything I could do to play paintball Saturday, Sundays. Um, and this year I realized how important drills were. So I, I focused uh, a lot on drilling. Um, I probably did about 25 drill days this year just to myself you know, going out to the field by myself and focusing on my snapshot and hmm. things like that. Um, so it was really just, you know, realizing what's holding me back and, and get better. And I mean, this year was my best year placing wise. Um, I got one first, uh, one second, which was cup and then uh, two thirds and like, I think four fourths or hmm. three fourths, wow. something like that. So so it was a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of, you know, getting going somewhat of the distance in, in events, but uh, definitely, um, like this year, playing as many events as I did, um, I learned a lot. So it was just putting myself in the situations that most people don't put themselves in in the sport, and realizing that more exposure is only going to be better for me when I'm playing the sport. So, hmm. yeah, that's a that's a lot. <laughs> um, I remember, yeah. I think in I think in two years. Uh, Christian and Sage and Brandon, I think when the team like decided to play speedball, I don't remember when that was exactly. It might have been 2016. But like from 2016 to 2018, those guys had played like 25 events or something insane. Like it was, they were going everywhere. And then Christian got on, Christian and Brandon got on Team USA. So then they were flying over to Amsterdam to play. And it was just, yeah, if, if, if certainly if you can afford it or find ways to afford it, um, the best way to get better is to play. Um, but that's cool to see that actually plan, uh, pan out that way. Um, and, and before we talk about, well, one of the things I want to get into is what your plans are in regards to paintball and content creation in 2022, but looking back now on the things that you learned this year in particular, cause it, I mean, you've expedited your growth and development as a player, but it sounds like a lot of that happened, uh, this last year and maybe towards the mm -hmm. end of the, of, of 2020. But if you had to tell yourself one piece of advice when you were first starting paintball, now knowing what you know, what would that be? uh as much as i want to say do do drills as often as you can um i would say just go to the field as much as you can really um if you're not playing you can do the drills but it's hard to tell people starting out to run drills because yeah. they don't have a passion for the sport um go to the field and get that passion um get into the weeds of what paintball really is you know and understand like this sport is 90% skill, you know, and then yeah. the 10% athleticism. Like, if you can shoot your gun and shoot somebody with your first ball, like, you're going to be 100% better than the person that can run really fast and not hit you. So just enjoy the sport, man, is, is the biggest thing I would have told myself. I let going out when I first started, but I didn't know how competitive I could be or how much, it would, how much better of a person it would make me mentally um, playing. Because, like, now it's like paintball drives me to do anything, like, when I work out doing school even so I can graduate because it's my last semester it's like nice. I just I just I, I need to I was like I need to finish strong so I can go get a job so I can go play all the ICPLs that I can't play now and then you know go over go overseas or go to Cancun and play those because that's I mean that's what I want to do is just play as many events as I can so it's like everything I do now is just it's you know paintball related even if it's not paintball related it's like the six uh what's it the six degrees um of separation to kevin bacon or whatever <laughs> it's called it's, it's it's like that with paintball with me man it's like literally everything's getting tracked back to paintball um so i would just say develop the passion everything else will come after that but i would tell myself to go to the field more yeah hmm. that's really cool that's awesome and you i don't know if you've seen these videos of mine or not i i, I posted them a while ago but i did post videos talking about in my perspective the differences between what you know the differences between a player playing in division five division four three two and the things that i saw stop them and prevent them from growing and with your perspective uh what do you think prevents somebody from being successful in division three and and maybe even division two now that you've you know played at the ranks that you have and maybe even higher i don't know if you've scrimmaged pro teams yeah. yet because you scrimmage the carolina crisis is semi-pro team so you certainly have that perspective so mm -hmm. what do you think, just as like a, a quick rundown, what do you think separates those between Division 3, Division 2, and Semi-Pro? Uh, I think the biggest thing I realized after this event was the willingness to do your job the best that you can do. Um, I was watching one of the CEP Raw matches and seeing like the little things I would have adjusted, even from the Semi-Pro level, 
um, to like help them win would have been a big difference. So I think it's just like the willingness to do your job the best you can. Like when I was playing the snake, I wasn't trying to hunt for kills. I wasn't trying to, you know, go all the way up the field and shoot everybody. I was getting into the snake and I was communicating. I knew what lanes I had to shoot. If there wasn't anybody there, I knew I could zone in case somebody tried to fill up. I was looking back, talking, making sure everything was happening. I would say your willingness to just do a job and do it to the best of your ability is a big thing. Hmm. Um, my my brother was another good example of that where he did his job like really good. Like if you watch film on him, he will sit there and shoot a zone until somebody runs through it, and then he'll keep shooting the zone, or he'll shoot he'll he'll be communicating the whole time. He's sitting there posted on someone waiting for them to move, um, things like that. Um, not trying to overreach what you're supposed to do. Um, I think one of the biggest things is just diving into your bunker, right, too. Mm. Um, even watching people, I was watching the 18 footage that Matt just posted, and the guy, like, ran over to the brick, and he didn't dive until he got to the brick. And I was like, "Yeah, you're already shot there, man. Yeah. I was like, you got to lay out and go through the through the, the, the zone super low. I was like, little things like that, just like, like I said, doing your job to the best of your ability. If I have to run and dive into the snake, I'm diving low through the zone. I know they're going to sh- be shooting me. Uh, I'm crawling up to the snake and then I'm communicating, shooting my shots. And then whenever I need to move or if I get those that information, I'm doing it. Um, but I think that's the biggest thing is willingness to do a job. Who's going to sit there and hold the zone for the whole entire, you know, point uh, instead of, you know, shooting it and then getting bored and looking for somebody's head, you know, things like that. Um, yeah. And then I, I, I know you're a super big proponent on communication. Um, just communicating uh, and not getting lost in the point talking you, like I've, I've i've heard you say this before um it's easy to talk like when the point first starts or 30 seconds into the point but like how do you sustain it and how what's the information that you're giving to people so um you can sit there and yell bunker codes for for uh a minute and a half but it doesn't really help if you don't know what they're doing what's happening uh who's looking where um things like that and then just processing that information too like if somebody's in this bunker, what what is what do I have and what can I not do? You know, um, like the the snake to the Dorito one at, at uh, World Cup. You could shoot it all day, but nobody ever shot the zone when they first got to the Doritos. Mm-hmm. So I was just going from the snake to the or from the snake one to the snake two, the the little wall. Mm-hmm. And so when I played the Doritos, I would shoot that instantly because I knew that somebody's probably doing it. So. Um, it was little things like that. Like if you didn't play it tight enough, or if I knew somebody was there, I knew not to look, you know, or if, if I did look and shoot, I was ready to shoot when I came out a uh, little things like that, just like processing that information and knowing, uh, where things are, but it's, it's a lot, you know, paintball, is, I think is one of the most complex sports when it comes down to everything you do. Cause the best thing, the best representation I ever got told about it was it's like football, but everybody has the ball. Yeah. <laughs> It's like basketball, but everybody has the ball. Everybody can score. Everybody can hit a three-pointer. Buzzer beaters happen all the time in paintball. Um, It's just in a different aspect. Everybody has the ball. So it's like who is going to make the play because everybody can make the play, you know? Yeah. So that's the biggest thing is is really just understanding that you have all the power and you also have none of the power if you don't use the things that you're given. So, Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. I haven't heard of that. I haven't heard of that. Uh, I described it that way, but that's perfect. Um, so then what do you think are your strengths as a player? And then what mm-hmm. do you think are your weaknesses as a player? Yeah. Um, I, it's hard to, to pinpoint a strength. I would definitely, if I had to just like generalize it, it'd just be playing the snake um, and communicating. Um, those are the two things. Uh, we, we played in Savannah last uh, yesterday. And my first point in the snake, I shot four people, and I was like, okay. Um, <laughs> I was like, so I'm, I'm still good at the snake. haven't lost it. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I, it's one of those things where when I go to practice, nobody wants to run into the snake. So I'm always the guy that runs into the snake, and I've been doing it for the past two years uh, or three years consistently. So I play the snake almost every point. So I would definitely say that me, and as much as I play, I play every weekend. And as much as I dive into the snake, that's definitely like my strong suit. Uh, and then I realized from playing the snake as much as I have that what I want out of a two behind me. And so I always apply that to where I'm always talking. I'm telling people where people are looking. Uh, I'm listening for who's talking behind me, what's happening. Um, and like if I'm over someone, hey, man, I'm over top of you. 
uh, I've got it. And then if they put me in, hey, I'm in, they're popping the top, hey, they're wrapping, stuff like that. Um, so I'm just very, I focus on communication. I think one of the best things that helped me with that was uh, I have a buddy, Elliot, who plays on the Saber Wolves, and he does some YouTube stuff occasionally. But listening to their communication in Tin Man, like Pro Tin Man, was insane when I first heard that. And I was like, that's all I have to do to be good at communicating is just tell them what the other team's doing. I was like, wow. I was like, let me just do that. So I kind of applied that too. Just like, hey, man, uh, this guy's rapping. This guy's looking cross. Uh, you can go if you want to. Stuff like that. It just it really helps. So those are the two big things um, of my strengths. Uh, now my weaknesses, I definitely would say, since I play the snake so much, is that I'm very poor at gunfighting, because uh, I don't get to do it out of bunkers a lot. Um, I'm always either going straight... Excuse me. And when you do, you're in a pretty bad spot, admittedly, right? Like, the snake is a very yeah. submissive position. You yep, want to surprise yep. people, you want to stay alive, so that's interesting, though. Yeah, um, definitely, like, downfield shooting. Um, I would say that my shooting off the break isn't bad, uh, because I drill that a lot, and... When I do shoot off the break, I, I've had more success um, in the percentage-wise than you would, like, hope for usually. But, I mean, when you shoot lanes off the break, you would, like, 100% shot, you know, shooting people off the break. But um, usually, like, I mean, if you're 30% or above, you're doing pretty good on shooting lanes off the break because uh, how many people shoot lanes off the break and how often do you actually get kills off the break is the is yeah. thing you got to look at. So usually you got three people shooting lanes off the break and then you'll be happy if you kill one person. So for sure, um, that's another thing that I feel like I'm a little I'm good at, but I don't get to apply it as much. Um, but yeah, definitely downfield gunfighting is a big thing. And that's what I've been drilling a lot Um that. And then surprisingly enough, like snap shooting down the wire. uh is another thing that I want to get better at because I do it so much that I, I realized that I would like to have that percentage a lot higher. Mm. Um, so actually I, I drilled that uh, Saturday and I feel bad because Sunday we went out and they had the same setup that I did drills on. So I was snap shooting <laughs> a lot of people out with my, my first ball. I was like, well, I feel bad for them, man. Cause I just did this for four hours yesterday. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, definitely like that's one of those things where even I might be like somewhat decent at it. I'm not happy with where I'm at. So that's another thing. But yeah, those are the two things that I've actually been drilling this off season um, because that's the best time to do it. Um, and so those are the two weaknesses I definitely have. Hmm. Uh, that and then playing the Doritos because people always want me to play the Doritos because I'm, I'm fast and, you know, aggressive. But I never get to do it because everybody and their mom will play the Doritos at practice, but nobody wants to dive into the snake. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so then what do you know what... Uh... That's all. That's all awesome and super interesting. I I always find it most helpful if you're you know if you're aware of what your strengths and weaknesses are to go into the next season with those. So that way you can, like that's what I did uh, this last year. Or no, mm -hmm. I actually started it in 2020. I said to myself, I want to be one of the best running gunners on our team, like hands down. And I remember <laughs> there was two times in particular where that paid off. Um, and it only came this year. There was a practice that we had. Uh, it was kind of a, a mixed match of our squads at our local field. And I don't remember which layout it was exactly, but I just remember running from the Dorito one to the 50 Dorito, essentially shooting cross towards the snake corner. And I shot Brandon in the face as I was running that. And he, and I, and this isn't to discredit, this isn't to like poke fun at Brandon. I would have been upset too, but Brandon was like very upset at that because it was like, <laughs> how are you hitting me running? That's not supposed to happen. Yeah. Cause you know, you're <laughs> yeah. hugging so tight. And, and I remember when that actually happened to me. And when I made that decision, which was in WCPPL 2019, I think it was event two, Peyton Tabata, who would go on to play for Ironman was playing for Vegas brawlers. And he was the snake one. And he ran from the start box to the to the uh, the corner bunker on the snake side. And I just went to if you guys are familiar with the WCPPL, all their layouts are essentially no true back center. They have two right and left bunkers offset from the middle. And so I was just literally making like a five step walk, uh, essentially to a bunker. And it was a can at this at this point. And so I'm shooting at him as he's running and he shoots me in the face as he's running to the corner. And I'm like. That should never happen. Like, I yeah. should not die to that. But also, how is he hitting me like that? And so mm -hmm. I've made it a priority of mine to be a very good uh, run and gunner. And uh, and that's helped give me a lot of, like, direction and purpose, especially when uh, we run clinics out here. So that way I can say, hey, you know, uh, T Tyler Harmon or Ryan Greenspan, tell me what I can do better uh, to improve this skill. So I appreciate you sharing that. Um, I'm curious then, I, I think we talked about it before uh, on Instagram or something, but... 
uh do you know what the 2022 season looks like for you and your squad what you guys are you going to stay in d3 or you're going to move up to d2 tell us what that looks like yeah so um <clears throat> um the guy who who's basically in charge of d3 is andrew um and and he's uh he's one of our players he player coaches um but he he said man let's just stay here we're all still d3 we have one guy that's d2 he just got back he just got ranked back up to d2 this year uh after that second that we got but um he's like let's just stay here and try and win the series um and i i agree um i think that we're all good enough to play d2 but um why push the envelope if you can you know be successful in uh this division rather than you know having another mediocre uh season um because their season was semi-mediocre this year um we played as the 843 in the beginning of the year me and my brother um and we got 25th at florida and then like 32nd at philly so it was not a great showing at d3 this is my first year at d3 um and they got an eighth at florida 16th at philly and then they went oh and four uh in chicago so it was a, a big turnaround um for us to join that and then get second so yeah. definitely seeing what we could do we as that squad we had never played together um so it was it was definitely impressive to see us come out there for our first event and take a second so it was like why not stay and you know try and prove ourselves in d3 and have like a you know a, a storybook season to where we show up and we win an event and hopefully you know are in the fighting for that uh that top spot for the whole entire year and then i mean if they're doing the the challengers cup this year or whatever it is i can't remember what it's called um the final event of the year where they're just paying out like twenty thousand dollars whatever uh, the champions cup that's yeah. what i think they called it uh yeah. if they do that that year that would, this year that would be another cool thing to attend as like one of those top teams that gets the invitation um so that's the plan i'm gonna play with crisis this year uh, i think my brother's gonna do the same he's actually sick in the other room mm. um right now which is unfortunate <laughs> for him uh, but um, I think me and him are gonna going to uh, play with them this year, um, and then uh, I think we have everybody returning. We have one guy in the Air Force, um, which is Chris actually, oh. um, which his yeah his sister plays out there with y'all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, so he he's tentative right now because of the Air Force um, and everything. But if he comes back, we'll have all seven guys that played last year um, coming back, which will be really awesome. So. Um, that's what that's what 22 is looking or 2022 is looking like uh, i'm still going to try and guest as many of events as i can uh, finish up my last year of college and i'm working as a researcher right now too at the school um so i have somewhat of a, of a money flow in so whatever i can like whatever i'm available to you know i have the funds to play uh, extra events i'm going to play i'm still d3 so i can play d4 events if i want to um the mvps is like eight hours away so if mm -hmm. i wanted to i can take the road trip down there um, so definitely just looking forward to playing as much paintball as I can this year. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna, my, my goal for, for this year definitely is just to drill more. Mm. So, uh, I'll be with crisis and I'm going to try and get them to, to do the same. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's 2022 kind of on an outlook from my perspective right now. So that's awesome. Um, and then what about from a, from a content creator's perspective, what are you wanting to achieve there? Yeah, um, so I actually stuck, uh, I had all my goals written down in my phone, um, and I always looked at them last year. So my goals last year was to do 45 videos. I think I did 31 this year on my YouTube channel. Um, so did, so this coming year, I want to do 40 videos because I feel like 45's a lot. Yeah. And that's around 50 hours of time that I'll probably save on videos. So uh, <laughs> 40, 40 videos is the goal. And then... um. I just want to keep up. I've been super consistent this year. After TikTok started blowing up, I listened to the, funny enough, the Play the Game podcast that they did with um, Bear's dad, Giovanni. Mm. Um, and he was like, you just got to put yourself out there. He's like, you have to commit to it and you have to do it. And like the third day after listening to that and posting on TikTok, that one, the first video blew up. We got 45 million views. Um, so that was like the first one where I was like, oh, like it, <laughs> it is pretty easy. All you got to do is just post stuff every day. Yeah. And so I want to get on uh I want to get on more of the shorts on YouTube, more of the reels on Instagram uh, and keep posting on TikTok. And then I do want to make a a Facebook page to where it has some of my content but in a smaller um in a smaller size that people can kind of get an idea of who I am and then funnel them to to YouTube and other uh other things. But those are those are the content creation goals. It's really just a 
put out my best work that I can um, in a consistent manner. And uh, I'm not too worried about the numbers, but I try and focus on what I can control. Yeah. So um, can't control who watches the videos, who likes the videos, if they hit the algorithm or not. All I can do is put my best foot forward. And so that's really what I, I try and focus on. I set my goals for things that I can control and not things that other people control. So the number of videos, staying consistent, um, being happy with the content I'm putting out are the big things. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. I'm sure, I'm sure we'll see some pretty exciting things with your YouTube channel next year. Oh yeah, year. <laughs> man, I hope so. It's growing. It's I just got a new like camera. Crazy. Yeah, this camera right here I just got. So this is a a new camera. So we'll definitely have some some good uh, footage coming soon. This is the same camera that so uh, that Matt used to shoot with Matt Dunn from Solus. So uh, I definitely know like. From watching his videos in the past, I know like what I can achieve. So definitely going to be shooting for some good, uh, some good, better content this year than the GoPro footage that everybody got last year. So yeah, yeah, and it's been tough too with the um, uh, optics camera as well. Like yeah, the optics camera is really convenient for the player, but very inconvenient for the viewer. And so it's like, yeah. it's like you know, I get it, guys. It doesn't, in, it doesn't impede your ability to see down your barrel. But like, man, nobody wants to watch optics barrel cam footage. I like, can't even, I can't even tell what they're shooting at half no, the time. No, yeah, you know? it's like, until, until they're bunkering someone. Yeah, yeah. So, um, well, I wanted to ask then, and before we, before I ask this question, if anybody has questions, feel free to ask them in the chat. Now, I was not looking up at chat up until this point, uh, just because I wanted to focus on the interview. But if you guys do have chat or questions for Matt, let me know in the chat, and then I'll be sure to ask him after this. Um, I I asked this question to Matt uh, Solis Photography when he was here, and this could be honestly like a dissertation hour long in and of itself. But what do you think is the problem with paintball? And I'm just going to yeah. leave it as broadly as that. I just, what do you think is the problem with paintball? And I'll let you interpret it however you want. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing, and it's, it's easy to say, it's hard to fix. Um, it's money, man. That's the biggest thing. I know, I understand how much it costs to do all this stuff, but when you put it to somebody in their face, it's so hard for them to feasibly, uh, you know, say yeah to that, you know, when, starting like even getting into speedball if you get you know uh, a mini gs with like a huge loader and a 68 tank and pants a pod pack a mask you get a gear bag um you know you gotta buy everything else if you start a team you're getting a jersey too i mean you're looking at practice for a whole month even after that it's it's a thousand dollars so yeah uh that's the hardest part for most people to say yes to even like inviting friends out when i'm like hey man all you gotta do is come out and buy a case of paint They're like oh how much is that i'm like it's like 60 bucks like entry is <laughs> is 20 we're playing rec ball so it'll be 20 dollars entry 40 dollars for a case of paint they're like i'm good man yeah I'm like, wow well um so it's just it's hard to get people to say yes when they don't know what they're getting into. And then the first thing that comes to their head is, oh, that's going to hurt when I get hit. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So um, it's definitely for the people that I think it's biggest for the people that like video games just because shooters are such a big thing. Um, but it's hard to get people to say yes to spending money on stuff that, that they already have like a negative connotation about where it's like, oh, that's going to hurt. Why would I spend $100, you know, to go out and play for eight hours or something like that? Um, but yeah, it, I think the biggest thing is the money, like even the NXL, like it's so expensive to go play an yeah. NXL event. Yeah. So, um, uh, it's, it's just hard to get people to say yes to spend that money. Uh, once you go past the money wall though, it's, it's really, it's, you could, you could reach into the bag and pull anything out that you wanted to, to where like the exposure is, isn't big enough. Um, like it's not that popular. So you, a lot of times you have to travel to go to somewhere to actually do what you want to do. Um, there's a lot of crazy people in the sport, and there's a lot of really good people. But sometimes those crazy people can overshadow the the uh, the good people. Um, so they they end up showing up, and then they'll have one bad experience at the field and not want to go back. Yeah. Um. But but like I said, I think money's the biggest thing. To where like paint is not cheap. Uh, probably if you're buying cases from like the manufacturer, like as a skid, the cheapest you're getting is like twenty. 20 some odd dollars a case and even then you have to buy it in bulk so if you're not buying in bulk the cheapest you'll get is like 35 bucks a case that's like the lowest that i've ever heard people getting it for so even then it's like it's hard to like me as a college person i go home and eat rice and eggs or <laughs> peanut butter and jelly sandwiches 
and that's what that's what I live off of in college because it's like all my money goes to to paintball. So yeah. it's it's one of those things. That money it's money is definitely the biggest thing for sure. So then <clears throat> on the flip side of that, what do you think paintball just does right? Or I, and again, I'll let you interpret this question however you like, but because it's different than what is it that you love about paintball? Because that's yeah. I think all of us could agree that it's there's nothing like shooting somebody with a paintball gun. Oh yeah. But what is it that you think paintball gets right? Uh, I think I think the biggest thing is it captures it captures those feel good moments that you have in other sports. Um, but it's like all the time. Uh, you know, like playing football in high school, play or wrestling in high school, played soccer in high school. It's like you know, like hitting a goal that you shot from like the the eighteen yard box, or you know, making a tackle for a loss, catching a touchdown. Um pinning someone in a wrestling match it's all that when you shoot someone a lot of times um and once you once you get deeper into the sport uh it doesn't feel like that but in the beginning it's definitely one of those things where it's euphoric to do something that you didn't you, like, you don't see yourself doing or you like you don't think comes often and then it just happens right like you just shoot a paintball and it hits somebody in the face and blows mm -hmm. up and you're mm -hmm. like I did that, and the whole time your adrenal, the whole time your adrenaline's pumping, right? You got other people shooting at you. Um, that's what sports are, and that's what paintball captures really well. It's just, you know, facilitating that adrenaline into, you know, um, something that feels a lot better. Um, putting yourself in the moment where you feel all this pressure, but yet you're still performing and doing something, um, and it's a lot of fun uh, when you go out there. Like the first couple times that everybody plays, they probably play rec ball. And it's one of those things where you're out there with your friends, a bunch of people are shooting at you, you're shooting at a bunch of people, and you just, you don't know what's happening, but you know that you have this paintball gun and you could shoot other people with mm -hmm. it, and those other people are trying to do the same thing, and you like catch somebody not looking, you're like, oh, I, I shot him! The Get crack, out, you know? the loud crack yeah. at a distance yep. is so satisfying. Yep. yep, or you'll see their hand go up, <clears throat> you're like, I did it! Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think that's what paintball does good, is really taking that adrenaline and uh, allowing you to you know uh, operate under that that uh, pressure um i think that's the biggest thing that i've i've noticed in paintball and everybody gets it if you take anybody out to the field it's like riding a jet ski man you cannot smile when you're riding a jet ski you're just <laughs> it's the same thing it's the same thing with paintball no matter how bad it hurts you'll like go home be like oh it was fine i yeah, like that you know especially sure. if you're not yeah if you're not too stressed out about it and everything you go out there to have fun like you'll have fun it's regardless like no doubt in my mind, even if somebody yells at you, you get in a fight at the field, you know, you get kicked out for the rest of your life, you'll still probably have a fun moment out there. So yeah, for it's, sure. uh, it's regardless, it's just, it's, it's always fun to play paintball. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. There's so many things that paintball does right. And one of them for me is, um, and I, this is probably true for other sports admittedly, but there's nothing like finishing a season with your buddies that you've been grinding the entire year with. And it, it's that camaraderie that they talk about, right? And I mean, I'm not saying it's anywhere close to what you get out of the military at all, but there, it's the closest thing for me, at least, that, and how I imagine that camaraderie feels like. That I have some of the closest friendships and relationships I have are with my paintball teammates, even though we don't hang out all the time. You know, it's, yep. it's, I don't see them sometimes more than once a week, maybe twice a week in some cases, but. Every time I show up to the field, it's like we're we're old friends that have known each other forever. And in some cases we have, which is which helps there. But yeah, when you when you struggle through a tournament together and you're all fighting for the same cause and it's hard and it hurts, um, there's nothing there's nothing like that. Like I play competitive gaming for some of you that don't know or some of you that do. And you can certainly play games with your friends all the time. And there is something special about that, but it is not the same when you guys are going to the field and you're sweating and you're both you're wanting to give up because of how hard it is and you're just running drill after drill after drill but you're pushing each other um there's something beautiful about that that paintball brings out um in my opinion so i love that um all right well we've got quite a few questions that came through here so um i'll try to do my best to some of your guys's usernames first of all uh caviar kev thanks for the follow yeah kev <laughs> i'm sure a lot of these people are from your community uh white lightning i think i had thank you already and out out of there gaming thank you as well and then i don't know how to say this uh swesh c w e s c h i don't know if that's somebody from your community but thank oh, you I'm thank you sure. so much for the follow um so out of out of there gaming asks what was your first gun what was my first gun uh that's isaac um if you wanted to call him by by a first name but um I, my first gun ever was a was a dsr i actually bought um 
I bought a what is it? A Axe Pro off my brother, but it was broke. Um, so I could, I didn't use it for like two months. Um, but uh, this guy was selling a DSR in like 2018, which it came out the year before. Um, so it was fairly new. He had barely used it, and he sold it to me for like half the price of it, brand new. Mm. So I was, I was like, yeah. Um, and I still love that gun. To this day, I will live by it. That gun is like one of the best shooting guns out there. Yeah, most people, um, most people love their DSRs. Yeah, that's the big thing. Is that like that's the one thing that that dies done good in the past like five years that everybody will agree on. Um, but yeah, the DSR was my first gun, and I I love that gun, man. I still I still like that's my plan. Is once I graduate and get a, get a good paying job, is that I'm gonna save up uh, and grab me a DSR for my backup gun. I'll probably end up shooting it more than I shoot my CS2, but definitely uh one of the better shooting guns in my opinion and definitely one that sticks with me that's awesome i uh i never had a chance i've never shot a dsr but i only hear good things about it and i actually tried to get somebody in my discord community <laughs> to bring to like meet up with me so i could shoot it while they were yeah. cornering it at a tournament because <laughs> it just looks it just everybody talks about how much they love their dsr yeah um, it shoots so much like a lv so it's it's very comparable oh, to like the lv shot yeah it's almost like the one poppet gun that doesn't have a poppet. So yeah, that's very in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, okay. White lightning asks, is airsoft better or worse? Is airsoft better or worse? <laughs> hey, it's, it's all, it's all what you want to do in life, man. Whatever makes Good you happy. Answer. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just go to the airsoft field and they'll be like, I shot you. Like it bounced. What are you talking about? <laughs> like they all bounce. Like, Oh, <laughs> I bad. I actually love airsoft. I don't, <clears throat> I haven't done it for a long time, but, I uh I have some some of my most cherished memories came through airsoft and there's a there's a group out here in Utah I don't think they I don't know if they exist anymore but um around the time when I was taking a break from paintball I was still looking for something to like mimic video games with and mm -hmm. uh, I came across this video still exist there I think it was called Black Ops Elite Night Vision like mission or something and there's like a bunch of different places out here in Utah that people drive out to uh, and they'll do like these realistic scenario uh, airsoft events and stuff. And a lot of the people that are part of the Black Ops Elite community have actual like night vision goggles. <laughs> and so yeah. they they went out there, set up two teams. One was holding a, an outpost. The other one was attacking. And they're like literally driving in a Humvee, pull off the side of the road and then like slow assault in nighttime. This And, and they have uh, video footage of it. that You can see like the night vision BBs traveling mm -hmm. there. It's so cool. And I was like, I, I want to do that. That looks so much yeah. fun. So they're different, obviously, uh, and to each their own. But I, I quite enjoy airsoft. It's just, it's hard to, I wouldn't treat airsoft the same way that I treat paintball. But I don't look, yeah. I don't look to paintball to mimic scenario as much as I would like, exactly. airsoft. So yeah, paintball, paintball is more of like my my sport type of team camaraderie thing. Whereas if I did airsoft, it would be definitely a um a simulation type of deal. So for sure, um. <laughs> It's not really a question for for you then. Let me see. It just says Kev, why are you always acting up? <laughs> He's already talked to, uh, talked to me about this, but I want some elaboration. This is from White Lightning. Why do you like speedball so much more than in the woods type of match? I don't know the word for that. Oh, just woods ball. So why do you like speedball more so than woods ball? Yeah. Um. So so I guess the best way to put it is speedball is the most uniform, uh, closest resemblance to like a sport. Um, like speedball at regulations, there's a field size, uh, there's a number on the teams. Um, the biggest thing that got me hooked was the fact that you can never be perfect at the game or you can never do everything completely perfect regardless of how hard you try. And that was the thing that really caught me was like, there's almost a limitless skill cap to paintball to where like, no matter how much I practice, no matter how much I drill, I will never come off the box and shoot five balls and hit five people. Hmm. Um, woods ball is kind of different. It's very free, relax, uh, like like free roaming. Uh, I wouldn't say relaxed, but more um, not uniform. There's not as much uh, regulation out there. There's a lot more just kind of guys that don't care and just want to do things just to do them, um, hmm. I would say. To where they're out there just to have fun and to crawl around in the bushes or to run around and shoot people. Um, speedball almost has that community to where people want to get better and people will show up. There's dedication. Um, there's um, a certain aspect to getting better that 
woods ball does not have because woods ball is mostly just going out there and shooting paintball guns at each other for fun Mm -hmm. whereas paintball is more of like when if you actually are there to get better in practice you're doing what you're bad at to get better at it right or you're you're focusing on the things that you're not good at or you're focusing on getting better at something uh woods ball is more of just showing up and shooting at each other um it's less focused on getting better because those people don't play competitively they don't have actual tournaments that they attend they're more of there just to have fun and shoot their guns um whereas us in the speedball community have tournaments that we go to we have seasons we have teams um and we have all that and it's very structured and very organized so you have things to work for and goals to work for so that's that's why speedball is is more of a thing for me because i've always played sports growing up um i do have a competitive aspect um to myself i wouldn't say i'm a competitive person in general but i enjoy progressing and um learning and evolving myself constantly so i'm i'm always looking for something to do that that's why i was in the gym because it was always progression um and that's why paintball has been one of those things that i really enjoy doing because it's one of those things where you can constantly get better at it for sure well, and, and to, to elaborate and to clarify as well, there there are definitely two, I would say, two kinds of types of woods ball. Yeah, There's ones 100%. that are they're very, and it's true even with speedball, right? Like you can go play in a speedball field, but it's very recreational. It's not team mm-hmm. centered. But in the case of woods ball, there's definitely the community that likes to either play casually or do scenario type stuff. Yep. You know, there there's, uh, and not even just in the sense of like, oh, it's a capture the flag thing, but like. People like to, you know, relive either their their time in the military or imagine what that would be like in some sort of kind of mill sim scenarios. Mm-hmm. But you do have the, you know, you do have competitive woods ball events. But what what is what is interesting is that those oftentimes, in terms of the layout of the field at least, get closer and closer to what speedball is already. At least yeah. for me, right? So but I that isn't to say that like uh, you know, 10 man woods ball events don't look like a blast because they absolutely do. I think playing on the and mounds, are, yeah. yeah playing on yep, the mounds event and the hyperball fields and all those are really cool. The the thing that I love about speedball is that you know that there is um it's there's competitive integrity is what it's called. You know, there's the field is exactly the same for the most exactly the same, right? When you go to yeah. a tournament, right? But they're the they're it's exactly the same on one side of the field as the other so that when you lose or when you die, you don't get the sense that like there's uh, this side of the field is disadvantaged because of this reason, right? Whereas in a lot of woods ball fields, especially at a casual level, it can be kind of frustrating to make a push somewhere and be like, oh, this is just like a really garbage part of the field to just stay in. And so it's yeah. like, and there's nothing I can do about it because they have height advantage. I don't have hardly any cover, yada, yada, yada. And, you know, you could obviously argue like, we'll just stay out of those spots. But that's all to say that for me, I, they're, they're just separate. I love speedball for what it is. And I love woods ball that, it, and how inclusive it can be for mm-hmm. a lot of people. And I think, I think that's kind of where you and I said is just the fact that we love speedball because it is the closest thing to, for us to a sport within paintball. And it yep. does allow for us to identify things that we're not good at and, and just work to it, work on them and grind those things and become, and see the progress within ourselves and how we become better. Yes. So, which is hard yeah. to do in woods ball, right? It's hard mm-hmm. to say like my army crawl and this isn't to like be facetious, but it's like my army crawling has gotten better. You know, that's not really the same as like, I'm, I'm, my Superman slides are really smooth and they don't hurt me anymore. <laughs> you know, yep. but yeah. that, you know, again, to each their own, but um, yeah, got to go. But this has been a great interview. Thank you, sirs. Uh, Alita. Uh, 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 how do you say it again? Bye, Adelie. Adelie. Have a good night. Adelie. I'm sure I'll talk to her later. So awesome. Thanks for tuning in, Adelie. Um, Honlo asks, what drills does Maddie uh, recommend to get better? So this is, I assume, just a broad question. Yeah. Um, I mean, I literally when I do drill days, it's just fundamentals until I feel like I need to work on something. Or I feel like I've hit like a plateau at something. Um, bunker to bunker snapshots is a big thing. Um, I'll just set up two bunkers that are probably you know forty feet apart, or what I feel like. If I feel like, like I said, I need to work on um, like shooting more down the field, I'll set my bunkers apart further. But really, just like the biggest thing is people don't know how to snap shoot correctly. Uh, and I've seen you play, so I know you know you have the t- the form down. But like. People don't know how to snap shoot correctly, so film yourself on just snap shooting. Uh, that's one of the biggest fundamentals in paintball. If you can snap shoot well, you're going to be a really good paintball player. Um, snap shooting is my biggest thing. I probably, when I do like full drill days where I'm just out there by myself drilling, I'll probably snap shoot for, if I'm out there for five hours, I'll snap shoot for three of those hours. Um, and it's literally um, standing, um, crouching, uh, on one knee, on both knees, 
um, anything like that is just focusing on snap shooting form and um, focusing on being consistent with my snap shooting. So the, the biggest thing that I've realized when doing drills is that if I can minimize how much my paint is moving when I do the snap shots, uh, it's going to be a lot more consistent when I am coming out and shooting. So it, if my paint's not within like a, a, a foot, a one foot radius, if I can bring that down to, you know, a six inch radius, I know that I'm getting more consistent with snapshots. I'm staying more or staying tighter um, and sticking to that. So uh, drilling snap shooting, um, shooting off the break is another big thing to where I'll set up a can, um, you know, across the field and I'll focus on pulling one, pulling my gun up and shooting one ball at it. Uh, and I'll do that. And then I'll eventually gradually go to shooting three balls and then I'll focus on shooting you know, five to 10 balls, um, and just keeping all my paint in that same spot, uh, especially shooting 10, five, if your paint's wobbly, people are going through that lane. Oh, so yeah. that's the big thing is when I do do laning is I want all my paint to hit that target. Um, because if not, somebody's probably running through it. So, uh, off the break and then running and gunning, I do it up close and then I eventually work my way back. Um, so focus on maybe like if I'm running down somebody, um, I'll set a target up and I'll run really close and shoot like three balls at it and try and hit it with all three balls. And I'll do that multiple times and I'll scoot back and slowly and then I'll, you know, go up to ramping. So those are the big three things that I feel like if you're good at those three things, you'll be good at paintball. Um, so snap shooting off the break and running and gunning. And you can you can evolve your snap shooting into gunfighting to where you're putting three balls on the target and then you drop down, put three balls. And it's more of a progression of that stuff, uh, mm -hmm. just like everything else. Everything has a progression. You know, one ball, standing up, one ball on a knee, and then I'll go to uh, one ball, you know, up top, and then drop down to a knee and do it. So uh, it's really just focusing on the fundamentals and being good at that and then slowly progressing once I feel comfortable with what I'm doing. So For sure. Tonlo knows this already, but <clears throat> for those of you who don't, um, I do have a TikTok where I show, like, various... Uh, fundamentals and drills and stuff like that for proper form. So take a look, check it out. It's just at, I think it's just at SVP paintball. So, um, yeah. white lightning asked, asking for both of y'all's opinion, best low budget gun. Go ahead. You have a, uh, any opinions? Dude, grab, grab a, grab a mini or, uh, any, any of those type of empire guns. I can't remember what's a mini, um, an ax or an ax pro. Um, they all work so for sure that's the biggest thing you can go you can go to nxl mode you can go um to you know just regular semi on it um if you need a low budget gun that's the one to go for because everybody asks me is it a good gun yeah like get that gun so you can go play paintball because if you're sitting there saving up for another two months and you're not playing paintball because of it it's like that's gonna suck man uh just get the gun it works fine um, I would go play out with a with a mini GS right now if that's the gun that I could afford. I would sell my gun and go go use that gun and play an XL events if that's what I had to do because it it works the same way as every other gun. Uh, it might not be as reliable, but you can always fix that stuff later. Um, sure. Just get you a gun that works and uh, usually buy used is my other thing that I recommend everybody. Everybody will send me the gun and it's five hundred dollars for that gun and I'm like. You can get that for two hundred bucks on on Facebook if you you know just do your do the right things legit check and um, pay goods and services you'll be good man. Um, so that's the big thing is is if you can get the cheapest gun you can that that actually works. Don't go the Azadin or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, that's 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 a gun that's gonna break on you. But uh, any of the uh, any of the Empire guns or if you can buy a used older higher end marker. Uh, GO3s used to be really cheap. I would always, I always recommended GO3s to people because they were like 350 two years ago. Now they're like 450. Um, but if you can get an older, higher end used gun, I would recommend that. Or if you're buying new, you could probably just go with, you know, like a, a Axe Empire Mini or any of those. For sure. Um, yeah, I would, I would say that the a lot of the value you'll find is in the used market, like you said. Yeah, 100%. you can get a lot of really good guns if you can uh, find them used, and I think a DSR is a good example of one that I may not, uh, yeah. it might unfortunately retain a lot of its value. So it might not be that cheap, <laughs> but a lot of the planet eclipse guns are really good. I think if you can get yourself uh, a Lux ice at this point, those are pretty good. Yeah. Most people, yep. most people think that those have held up pretty well. Um, and, and the nice thing about doing used, especially when they're higher end guns at the time is that you won't need to replace them very quickly because the unfortunate reality is that if you do go with something like the Azadin or whatever, even an ax mini, I would argue, 
uh, within the first three to six months, you're probably looking to replace it. And then you're essentially putting towards the money that you could have just put up front for another gun. Yeah. So yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, if you can find any used gun, Planet Eclipse always has very reliable guns. I think that's a great angle to go for. Um, DSRs, I love my I love my TM40. My my Lux TM40 is such a good gun, but I don't know how many you'd find used. But um, I'm sure there's quite a quite a market for that. Yeah, it all depends on your budget, right? Um, but if you can, if you have a $500 budget, you can get us. I mean, DSRs Super are 450 good. right now in the used market. Uh, you can get ice for probably 500 bucks. Um, like that's that's the mark you can get a cs1 for 500 bucks probably like those are all super good guns if you go in any lower than that you're definitely looking at something that's uh probably not gonna be as reliable you could probably get the job done for a while but like you said you're gonna be looking to replace it so yeah um jtunes asks what would you say are some of the most important skills to improve on for playing at a higher level like snap shooting running and gutting etc i don't know you kind of touched on that a little bit earlier but maybe if you could focus on one thing in particular yeah um for me playing the snake snap shooting is like the biggest thing right like if i can come out and hit somebody with one of my first three balls which is usually the time that they have to react to it so one of my first three balls is going to hit them um that's a huge thing for me um it all depends on on your position but for me at cup um there is i get this countless times where i came out to shoot at someone and one of my first three balls hit him and it surprised me because that was like I'm not used to that, mm. Uh, mm. <laughs> but I've been drilling it for the past uh, past year, and that's all I've been doing. So it's you know it paid off. But definitely, um, if it's specific, you know, figure out what you do the most and what is the most crucial part, and then focus on minimizing the amount of um, you know like the amount of um, flaws that you have in it, or a minute, or maximizing the percentage of times that you do it right. Um, for me, it's the snap shooting. Um, maybe for someone shooting in the back center it's you know shooting that lane and or maybe if you're transitioning lanes it's the first three balls need to be on point for both both spots that you're shooting um for someone like playing the doritos it's you know gunfighting or staying just staying alive um snap shooting's another thing um but yeah it's it's definitely focusing on what you what you have to do and making it to where you do it better more often right um, making a higher percentage of you doing it right. Uh, like I said, for me, snap shooting is a big thing to where if I realize that, oh, my snapshots are off, I'm sitting there focusing on dialing it in to where if I'm not hitting the target, I'm really, really close. You know, I'm not all the way off and holding my gun, you know, right all the, all the time, um, always being ready. But yeah, making those, those things that are important, um, capitalizing on those, those moments more often. So, uh, just minimizing the the amount of times that you don't do it right. Yeah. Um, that's, that's awesome. In his case, he was saying in his position at, at, well, in his case, the question is directed towards somebody who'd be playing the number two or the number three position. Okay. So would you yeah. say that it would still be, I mean, the first, first shot accuracy, first three ball accuracy is like key, especially if you're trying yeah. to get the person that you're trying to stop from moving up the field to not move you have to be accurate but is there anything else from that perspective that you would add yeah i, I mean i guess timing's another thing right especially playing the two you're more often than not gunfighting with like the one on the opposite side of the field or you're looking over um communicating um the big thing when i play the two is putting my paintballs where i think people are going to come out at um so if i'm the two on the dorito side which this is a good application of yesterday. Uh, I was a two. I was playing a tower, and then Doritos were offset um, going up the field, and they were, like, in the Dorito three, and I was constantly just putting paint to where I thought they were at, you know? And I was like, they're they're going to either come out into it or something is going to happen. So I guess it's it's more of, like I said, minimizing your randomness, and I'm shooting to where I think they're going to come out and not to, you know, just shooting their bunker and shooting all over uh, while communicating. So it's this, this, that timing um putting your pain there in the correct spot so that's another thing is just you know being good with your gun i mean so many people like don't know how to aim a paintball gun don't know how to hold a paintball gun how to play their their bunker if you can do all that correctly you're automatically a better paintball player than someone who can't do one of those three things that i just listed off so it's like like i said it's minimizing like what you do wrong um and maximizing your efficiency and your accuracy yeah it's it's always surprising to me how many people uh and this is, I think, a problem with paintball, but I, it surprises me how many people between Division Three and even Semi-Pro who say, oh, I don't drill, I only play points. And it's like, 
well, then you'd have to play a lot of points yeah. to get as good as some of the pro players that are going to stop you from advancing because those guys put in work. And if you can't, and, and I would argue that the theme that you've been sharing with us today is a lot of accuracy. Like you've got to just hit where it is that you're shooting. Um, yeah. <laughs> I need I need to stop you for just, or I need to stop myself for just a second and say, Tonlo, thank you for the four gifted subs. Matt, you're now a sub again to the channel. So, and I think Missing Coded was a person I played in Halo. So I don't know if they're here now, but thank you for this, man. Thank you for the four, four gifted. And then Gazerk, buddy, I love you. 14 months, our baby's grown up so fast. Um, thanks for the resub. <laughs> 14 months, the resub. I appreciate it. Um, we've got some more questions here, and then we'll probably wrap it up here pretty shortly. Um, but let's see. And I really do appreciate your time. Hopefully this has been as good for you as it has been for me. Oh, yeah, it's been awesome. Um, let's see. Out of there gaming asks what maybe maybe share with us one maybe two workouts that you would recommend that are the best for paintball workouts for paintball yeah um i think the 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 biggest things we do in paintball is run to our bunkers and then we're in our bunkers right so a lot of it is just like working on core stability um i would say like any type of oblique exercise um for snap shooting and holding like if you're out of your bunker and sitting there shooting um to maintain like the lowest amount of um, profiles possible, you're most likely crunched over. So core exercise would be good. Um, and then if you can just do like high rep squats would be another thing, um, or even do them in your room. This uh, I made a good point to somebody the other day that you could be a really good paintball player by just doing workouts in your room, um, doing Absolutely. squats in your room, squat jumps, maybe uh, lunges, things like that to where your legs don't fatigue as fast. Um, that's a big thing for me, like especially playing the snake when you have in Florida was a good example when it'd be really long points and I was in the snake one, like curled up in a ball almost uh, sitting there with my gun. And then we get a kill out of the corner and I'd have to crawl all the way to their snake uh, after sitting on my knees for two minutes straight. Um, so like especially just being working on your, your legs and your core stability. Uh, another thing is shoulder is your shoulder shoulders, too, because. You hold your gun sometimes for a long time, and especially for someone like me who does snap shooting as much as I do, my shoulders get fatigued really fast, and you do not want that to happen when you're in a point, uh, and it's a long point, and your shoulders are hurting, you can't hold your gun straight because it hurts. Mm -hmm. So uh, those are the big three things, and then just working on conditioning. Uh, it sucks for you to run to a bunker, and you can't talk for the first 30 seconds because you're catching your breath. Um, so I, I would say conditioning um your your core and then your legs and your shoulders are the other things that you could focus on but definitely your core and your legs and then conditioning are the are the big three things i would recommend to people and just squats um crunches or ob oblique side crunches and then running for sure i i would uh i would add to that if i if i could only give one person or a person one thing to do this might be a little controversial I would I would say you should absolutely maintain your mobility within your joints because yeah. that will absolutely kill you when you get older like me. <laughs> I'm 30 yeah. years old now and I cannot tell you how difficult it is to play in any position. I primarily play the number 1 on the Dorito now, but it is so hard to get in low survivable positions when you can't when your hip flexors are are like inflamed yeah. or when they're when they haven't been stretched properly or your ankles for example you can't like lay on your ankles for a long point like those things really catch up to you when you start getting older and you keep playing <laughs> so obviously you want to work on your athleticism your speed your strength all of those things are super important but i i think that a lot of that comes as a byproduct of putting in the work on the field like you talked about and then if you did nothing else outside of the field i would say you absolutely should stretch you should maintain your vertical and horizontal mobility horizontal is really just running but if you could if you could maintain that mobility throughout the entire time you play paintball you will feel really good when you play and you'll prevent a lot of injury um but that isn't to say that you shouldn't do all those other things because i absolutely agree with you and i think those who are wanting to really take paintball very seriously and push the pro ranks or even higher up and where they're at currently you have to do those things for sure yeah, and I'd 100% agree on you. Uh, agree with you that I always separate those, um, like like workouts and and stretching. But uh, you're 100% right. Tyler Harmon's a good uh, representative of someone who is extremely flexible and can literally get in any position that he needs to be in, and then pop up like like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I I was watching the video that he did the clinic at uh, Blast Camp, and um, Ryan had had filmed it from Rye Guy Media, and I was watching him literally just like 
go from leg to leg, like get down on both knees, get up on his feet. And I was like, dude, that's a lot of flexibility. And so like, that's it's when I started mobile. like stretching a little bit more. Yeah. But like when you're in the snake or you're in the Doritos and you're on both legs and your hips start cramping and you're like, I have to straighten my leg out, but I cannot do that right now. Uh, it, it sucks. So that's a big thing. Like even whenever we would do drill days and guys would come out, they're like, I can't get in the snake like that. Like, you gotta stretch, man, because you're gonna get shot if you can't play the snake like this. Like, put your leg under so you can pop up. It's like, oh, my hip won't let me do that. I was like, well, you gotta work on why that. Why are you playing this? Yeah, why are yeah. you playing the snake then, man? Because that's what you have to do in the snake. But yeah, it's things like that. Um, it definitely helps. And like you said, the longevity of the sport that's definitely gonna help. So for sure, you're 100 percent right on that. Yeah. No, but you're and and I would. <laughs> That almost seemed like a gotcha. You're ab- you're absolutely right. Those are pretty much two different things, stretching and working out. But I just thought, oh, that's interesting. Looking back now, like I I thought to myself, sprints, all, and those are all very 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 important. But yeah. I wish I did more for my mobility and flexibility mm-hmm. uh, than I have. So, um, all right. The last question, and then we're gonna finish the stream up, is uh, from Out of There Gaming asking favorite field you've played on, and do you have any bucket list fields? I would honestly say oh. the pro field is probably everybody's bucket list, but yeah especially the world cup huh that was uh (laughs) you know what's funny is when i went out there everybody was like dude how was that playing out there i was like man i literally did not let it get i went out there like if you watch the finals matches like all of my points that i played were you would say oh you did good like you did good matt um i did not let it get to me because i played high school ball before we had one one uh game when we played the a team that was super popular in our area um, the first time ever our school had played him, we had over 5,000 people in the stands, and it was literally like at a high school game, like every, you couldn't see a bleacher anywhere. Hmm. Um, so I've played on stages where like there was, you know, 5,000 plus people watching. And I mean, out there at World Cup, there was probably 1,000 people max. Um, but it's definitely, it means a lot. So it hit me as I was filling up my 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 uh, tank. I was like, I had like this chill go over my body. I was like, I'm about to play in the pro field. And then it went away and I just went out there and balled. I didn't let anything change. Um, I didn't let anybody talking to me or anything like that change it. But uh, definitely, like, the bucket list. The bucket list now is to win when I go out there. Um, I always I always question that, too, of, like, if I play pro, will it be as rewarding as playing semi-pro and making it all the way to the finals? Um, but that's something I'll worry about when I get there. Um, definitely playing pro is another cool thing that I would like to do. Mm-hmm. But um, best field that I've ever played at was probably prime in uh, in Alabama um that, I'm sad that we didn't get to pr- play there that makes me sad yeah but. it's uh it's <clears throat> it's like it's like uh golf course greens grass um and um what's his name is it mike mike mcgowan that plays for um tampa bay damage or played for tampa bay damage oh, um, i'm not sure yeah i think that's his name but uh he he owns the field um and so he I, he takes really good care. They've got two fields out there, and so they'll play on one and let the other grass grow up. Mm-hmm. But uh, we play we played out there when there was a um, a tropical storm coming through. We practiced CP, um, but that was definitely like diving on that grass just felt like pillows. Um, Marcella talked about it once playing at a Toro's field. Uh, he's like, dude, if I played on that grass every weekend, I would. He's like, I'd feel ten years younger. And I was like, <laughs> playing on that grass was the same way. It was like. That's a that's a really nice field. Um, other fields that are like notable mentions, um, Savannah in Savannah, uh, Georgia, their field has definitely came up a lot. They just like did a lot of stuff. We went out there yesterday and played a couple of us just to do pickup. But um, mm. they've got like um, Jacksonville Jaguars old turf out there. Um, they just like put an overhang out there. They've got like Corona stations inside the overhangs. So it's really cool. They have a lot of nice stuff. Um, and then the Augusta field that we that we were practicing out of, we reseeded the field, um, and they got brand new bunkers, and that like the perfectly flat, everything's nice there. That that feels probably really nice right now, uh, but we have because we haven't been out there in six months. But um, that's another field that's like so nice. They have great pits. Um, the air, but another big thing, the air always fills up to forty five hundred. Um, that's that's a, nice. That's a rare a, thing a, at a lot of fields. Yeah, I know. It's it's really upsetting when you go out there and you get like 3K and you're like, well, I'll be back <laughs> here soon. Um, but yeah, um, those are those are like my three notable mentioned fields that I really really like uh, playing at. So that's awesome. Yeah, we played it. Uh, we played at Gulf Coast Paintball when we scrimmed the Hurricanes, which was a good field. It was a nice field, but I'd heard a lot mm-hmm. about Prime and I was hoping to yeah. play there. But um, awesome. And then I, I guess last thing, Gazerk, thank you again for the tier one sub gifted to Out of There Gaming. So welcome. Glad to have you, buddy. Thank you so much, uh, Colton. 
Um, well, that's that's pretty much it for the questions that I have. Is there anything else that you want to say before you plug your socials and let us know? I mean, most of the people here, I'm sure, are your fans, but let us know where people can find you. Yeah, man. Uh, I want to say, Stephen, that you've been doing a freaking awesome thing for paintball. Um, there's not, like I said, there's not a lot of people creating content, and literally every time you put out content, it's top tier for paintball that. content. So, um, your your barrel cam is literally like one of the funnest things to watch and i'm surprised it hasn't got more traction than it has because you literally put so much time into that stuff <laughs> and i know it because i've done it before and like when i what the first time i ever watched one of your barrel cam videos i was like that probably took him a long time to make <laughs> I was like, and it came out really good so I um that. i really i really i really am a big fan of what you do and everything you do and um i'm sure a lot of people really appreciate it because you have a lot of knowledge and even though like some people might look at like what you say, your APPA, and say, "Oh, like you're not a good player. You're you're a hundred percent like one of those gurus that like if I had a question, I would go to you for it, right? Because you <laughs> wow. have you have this this you have this deep knowledge for breaking things down, like putting stuff together, uh, especially with the Halo background. Um, listening to like the videos for your how to be a better or why you're stuck in Vision Three, um, and like relating it to Halo and your other the other video you most recently did of relating like communication to Halo. Um it opens up people's thinking, right? Like I don't have to, you know, I'm not stuck. I'm not stuck, you know. It's just these little things I have to fix. Uh and that's that's why everybody loves paintball, right? Uh that's everybody why everybody loves competitive paintball is cuz you constantly you can just tweak the dial a little bit and become just a better player. So, uh you're doing a great <laughs> thing and and I mean Thank if, you. If, wow. you have, if you have one fan um, that tells you it every week, uh, it'll definitely it'll definitely be something that that helps out. But I, I'm here and I'm watching all the content and uh, I'm supporting you, dude, because I know what you're going through and I'm going through it, too. So I really appreciate you, man. <laughs> wow. I did um, not pay him to say that. <laughs> yeah, no, it, he didn't have to, man. It was all the hard work he put in. You earned wow, it. Wow. Wow. I that means the world to me. Well, I. I wanted to get you on here because I saw what you were doing with your, not only with your YouTube, but obviously what you've accomplished with TikTok. And now knowing more about what you've done with paintball, it is incredibly obvious that you, you, when you focus your mind on something, you accomplish it. And I think that's super admirable, especially during really hard times like COVID. I think a lot of people lost uh, motivation, even myself, like during the 2020 season, it was really hard to stay motivated. And now starting a channel and going through the ups and downs of that and trying to stick to a, a committed schedule, I, I look to you as that example of somebody who can do it and somebody who is relatable. Maybe that's a, maybe that seems like an insult, but I hope it doesn't. I really do look at you as a, as a person of inspiration saying, look, Matt's doing it. He's, he, he's grinding his heart out and he's doing great work. I love your videos. I, I loved your 2021 recap. I actually have your other video pulled up of like barrel cam moments of 2021 that I'm going to watch mm -hmm. here pretty soon. Um, and to see again, you grow as much as you did, even just in one year from both a paintball and content creation perspective is just insane. So I commend you for that. And I, I wish you the best of luck coming forward. We'll have to for sure do, uh, we'll have to play some halo together. We'll have to play some Apex yeah, together. hundred percent, man. That'd be so fun. So, yep. um, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, plug your socials and then, and then we'll wrap this up and I'll be sure to include it in the video description of this video. So awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Just look up Matt, the gym rat. You'll find me, um, especially now with as much as has been going on if you just type in matt the gym rat with spaces or without you'll probably find me so just any any type of social media um you can send me friend requests on facebook if you want to um it's at uh matthew davies so uh but yeah that's where you can find me if you just look at matt the gym rat there's uh not many matt the gym rats and uh, I would definitely put my my hat in the the ring as probably being one of the best of them, <laughs> not to, not to brag or anything. I but, would agree um, with that. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, just just Matt the gym rat anywhere, pretty much. Big shout out to your brother too. Uh, I'm sorry he's not feeling very well, but I know you guys have been playing paintball a lot, uh, or probably yeah. since you started, like you said. So big shout out to him. Uh, we'll see where where life takes us and maybe we'll get him on here at some point too <laughs> yeah he'd be interesting so <laughs> awesome well thank you so much matt i'll talk to you later yeah man see ya all right wow what a stream <laughs> i i don't even know what to say i'm incredibly flattered by by what he said um but yeah as i said before some of you are turning in now matt was the very first person who ever came up to me uh ever and said hey are you the guy that makes those youtube videos and i said yeah and we started a friendship ever since and so 
I, uh, I, I attribute our connection to him, uh, and, and he's just been an awesome friend. So that's it for today's stream. Um, just to, before you guys take off, uh, to give you.